A key ingredient in most liquid derivatives markets is the trading of spreads between one instrument and another. In effect, most commodities trading is based on a differential between two or more prices. Few traders are taking outright risks, but most are picking very specific relationships where they have a developed an expertise and expect they can both recognize certain trends for the market and in any event can minimize the risk exposure by making such a trade. Most pertinent to the energy industries are the spreads between the input and output prices in a commodity production process. With the advent of petroleum derivatives trading, the petroleum crack spread became a key differential. It measures the cost of the raw petroleum going into the process and the heating oil and gasoline coming out the other end. Since petroleum refiners often had to use catalytic cracking units, the term petroleum crack was the logical trading name. With the advent of the electricity, natural gas and coal trading markets, the derivatives world added the word spark spread uh, to indicate the difference between the input price of gas and electricity, and also dark spread to indicate the difference in the price between the raw coal input and the electricity price. Both the spark and dark spreads can also be called dirty, and that's when they don't incorporate the cost of purchasing carbon credits to offset the emissions from the power plants. In all cases of these input-output spreads, the financial traders uh, develop standard relationships describing the amount of each input required for each unit of output. As is the reality for each bean crushing operation, each oil refinery or electric power plant, these will vary from the standard trading models and each heading risk management team for those operators will have to adjust accordingly. As a way of example, let's have a look at a simple dark spread calculation using standard US measurements. Since we're dealing with physical assets, there's always going to be a financial and a physical component. And we see that especially in the spread calculator. The spread representing the profit of running the unit. We can think of it essentially, as we said earlier on, as the difference between the input and the output costs. So therefore, on a financial level, we see we've got a power price. That's in our revenue terms. That's the amount I've sold the power on the market for, um, dollars per megawatt hour. And in the cost level, you see I'm nearly dealing this simplified example with a coal cost and a transportation cost. I'm not dealing with any other externalities. But you can see, therefore, I've got a coal cost in dollars per tonne and a transportation cost in dollars per tonne. Now, the next two terms, the heat rate and the heat content, are functions of the physical nature of the process. Fundamentally, what we're doing is we're taking the energy that's in the coal, uh, burning it and converting it into electricity. Therefore, we need a function that accounts for the amount of energy within the uh, fuel, that's the heat content, and also how efficient we are extracting that heat out. So that's for the heat rate and that measures the efficiency of the unit. Once we combine these terms, we therefore we have a power price, the revenue, we have a cost involved, that's the coal and transportation cost, and we also have the conversion factor, that's effectively the heat rate and the heat content.